this is Mike. I am in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2016 Volkswagen Passat, and this is the SE trim level. Now, it has the turbocharged engine, and it gets 38 miles per gallon on the highway. It's amazing four-door sedan. So let's go ahead and check it out. Right off the bat, you're probably noticing the sweet alloy wheels and a kind of like a matte finish. It really has a good contrast with the black paint especially. So you can see it has the uh, ventilated disc brakes here on the front. And the solid disc brakes in the back. But man, those wheels match up perfect with the black paint. Let's go ahead and check you out the front here. We have halogen reflector headlights with the high and the low beams. Check out the grill. Has those chrome accents across the very front. You have the big Volkswagen emblem. Black and chrome, I'm just a sucker for black and chrome. But it's looking awesome with the chrome just accenting it just right. And look at the little angles there on the hood. Kind of giving it a, I don't know, just like a, a sleek, classy look. So this is what the key looks like. And, and Volkswagen's used this key for a while now. You can see it has the emblem there on the back. You have the uh, lock and unlock buttons. You also have the trunk button, trunk release button. And check it out, switchblade key, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and make sure it's unlocked by pushing the unlock button and let's check it out. There's the inside of the passenger door. Wow, look at all the tan. It has a tan interior and with this kind of like a light colored wood grain here and then you have this uh, faceted metallic accent there at the top and then the black at the very top with a synthetic leather texture there looking amazing and the just the ergonomics of the door this slants down this portion slants down to uh, to contour your arm really nice you have a bottle holder and some little storage pockets there here's your threshold and it has a manually adjusted seat here on the passenger side and you do have the ability to raise and lower the seat with this little lever here this is a manual adjustments for your lumbar support, which is really helpful. Now the seats are a synthetic leather material, which a lot of people say lasts for a long, long time. Has the perforated there, uh, portions there, and then uh, just a really, just a really nice, nice seat. You see the perforations go all the way up real high on the back. And there's a slight amount of bolsters there on the side, but it's it just really comfortable seat. It's not intruding on your body at all. So here's your dashboard. The, this faceted uh, metallic, um, like metal accent with that wood. I mean, check out that wood grain. It's like a real light colored wood. Accents the, the, the tan interior perfectly. Okay, so we have a locking glove compartment. Let's check it out. You can see in there. And you have the, uh, has a little light in there and it's all, all plastic. You have a place to put some pens in there. You also have a button uh, to keep people out of your trunk. And you can also have another button to reset the tire pressure monitoring system in there. Let's take a look in the back. Plenty of room back here, it's amazing. Here's the inside of the back door. Same styling pretty much as the front. You have the bottle holder and everything there in the door. And check out the leg room. I mean, that's a serious amount of leg room here. There is a significant hump there in the center. So the center passenger will have to straddle it or be kind of short. So the seat is actually just basically a bench seat, uh, but it is a does fold down in a 60-40 uh, fashion. You can see this cup holders and armrests there in the center if you don't have a center passenger. Seats are all looking good. They even perforated seats back here as well. You also have a USB port back here. 
So <laughs> somebody wants to charge their cell phone, they can plug it right in. Now if you have more than one person want to charge, they're going to have to share it. The fuel door is on the passenger side, so you have the passenger put gas in the vehicle for you so you don't have to do it. And it's pretty neat because you have this little cap with this little prong there and you can just put it like that. It keeps it out of the way while you're pumping gas and it keeps it from kind of dangling down on this on the string and scratching your paint. So it's pretty cool they provided a little place uh, to put the cap out of the way. Let's take a look here in the back. See it has the chrome accents here across the back as well with the chrome emblem. You also have a chrome single exhaust tip back here. You got the TSI badging. So opening up the trunk, you can either use the key, which has a little button, or there's a little button just under here that you can push, and it pops open, and like you just push the button and, and it flies open, so you don't actually have to lift it up, which is pretty awesome. So here's the trunk, really huge trunk. You have space here on the sides, all the way on the ends there, and it goes in there long ways. And also those seats fold down, and once the seats fold down, uh, you have tons of cargo space. You can see it's a 60-40 split back there, so once you fold it down, you can fold one side or the other or both, and that way you can have a combination of cargo and passenger space. So here is just the, a cover, um, and this lifts up, and you'll see there's your spare tire and tools under here, and there's some space around the tire, so you can utilize that space for cargo area if you need to. And also, this little thing hooks right up here, so you can hook it, and that way it'll hold it out of the way for you. It's pretty neat. Just want to mention something, this one has the handles under here uh, to pull the trunk down. Now I'm just curious, um, some people like have a, uh, that's like a big deal to them, and I'm curious because if you were to like grab that, you would have to sling the, in order not to touch the outside of the vehicle, and, and the argument is, or the statement people say is, if it doesn't have a handle on the inside of the trunk, then you have to touch the outside and it's typically dirty. But how do you like close the trunk with your arm in the way? Um, are you just slinging it down or uh, how do you do that without actually touching the outside of the trunk? So maybe you can leave that in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's take a look at the window sticker so you can get all the details here. And you, of course you can use the pause button if you wanna pause the video and you can check out everything in more detail. Just kind of look in here and give you another point of view. Got that light in there. Really surprised with the roominess of the back seat with the leg room and everything. So to start the car, use your switch blade, so that's fun. And you have uh, pretty traditional other than that. You have to put the key in and turn it. Let's take a look under the hood. So to open the hood, there's a little latch just under here, a little bit slightly to the right of the emblem. It's right in there, you just lift it up. It looks like that. And it goes up all the way by itself. So you just lift it up a little bit and it'll go up. So here's your engine, it's a 1.8 liter, 170 horsepower with 184 pound-feet of torque, turbocharged, stratified injection, direct injection engine basically and it's kind of covered up a little bit with plastic but hey you can see a little bit of metal under here which is looking pretty cool the actual turbo is kind of hidden back there you have the insulated battery everything's pretty tidy under here And for having a plastic cover on it, um, it, the actual cover looks pretty cool. Let's take a look on the driver's side door. It's basically just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have your power windows front and back, and it's a one touch up and down for the front. 
like so. And the back windows, is they are also automatic, up and down. There's a button there to open up the trunk in case you don't want to use the key or anything. There's your storage pocket. Power seat here on the passenger side. You have the uh, go forward and back, and then you have the tilt, and lumbar support is power as well. Pretty awesome. Your headlight controls are here. You just have an automatic section and then on. So that's your, your choices there. That's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. And under here is a little storage pocket with some places to put some coins, quick access coins. It's pretty neat. You also have a tilt and telescoping steering column to get just the right position. Then you can lock it in place just like so. Okay, here we are on the inside. Looking sharp with that wood grain, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel first. It's a leather wrapped, and it says leather on the window sticker, so I'm assuming it's a real leather wrapped steering wheel. It has a kind of a flat bottom at the bot down here, giving it a sporty look, and then you have this metallic, not metallic, but a shiny uh, gloss black accent just a really, really nice. You can see for yourself, it looks really good. Have the metallic accent there. But let's go ahead and check out some of the buttons. Um, well, well, before I get to that, just want to mention it doesn't have a perfectly round steering wheel. It's kind of sharper on this side and more round on the other side, which is kind of interesting. You don't I haven't seen that too much in other vehicles. Um, so it has an interesting feel. Plus, you have these little nub um, grip extenders, I guess some people call them, but it's kind of like for the 10 2 position, but also help you with your control like that. So here on the left side of the steering wheel is your cruise control buttons. And this isn't a normal everyday cruise control. This is uh, has an adaptive cruise control. So once you turn it on, uh, you can turn it on and off there, and then you can change through your speed. You set it, you can change through your speed, you can cancel and resume. But this button right here is gives you your distance so adaptive cruise control if you're not familiar with it it will keep your distance from vehicles in front of you so if you're going 70 on the highway and there's a car going say 68 slightly slower than you it will slow to, it'll sense that vehicle slow your vehicle down to a set distance from that vehicle so that way you start matching their speed so that way you don't keep closing in on, on people and you have to constantly uh, change your speed and cancel and resume and all that stuff. It's really really stress-free driving on the highway with the adaptive cruise control and you can set the distance using that button. So I push that button and now you can see over here it'll show you the different distances you have to choose from. Um, I like a real far distance if possible uh, but sometimes you have to kind of fine-tune it depending on traffic situations. If you leave too much room in front of you somebody might just you know, put their vehicle in there and then that way you, you have really uh, tight following distance. You don't want that. So that's a really cool feature. And your volume for your radio is down here. So the buttons here on the right side of the steering wheel, the bottom here, it corresponds with your radio. It can change through your presets uh, like so. And then these the rest of the buttons, uh, you have your phone button so you can answer and receive calls using that button. You can also uh, use the voice recognition which is awesome but the rest of the buttons correspond with this little menu system between the gauges which we'll get to in a second here on the left side is just your high and low beams and your windshield wiper controls are there on the right and so let's go ahead and look at the gauges you have your RPMs here on the left temperature gauge there on the bottom left and on the right your speedometer which goes up to 160 miles an hour and your fuel gauge there at the bottom you notice it has a little fuel pump with an arrow pointing to the right showing you which side your fuel door is on which is pretty cool so right here in the center you have an information screen and you can see at the top left it has an S standing for south so the vehicle is facing south that's your digital compass 
you have a clock, which is awesome. At the very bottom, you have odometer on the left and the trip on the right, and then a outside temperature. So we already have a lot of information right off the bat. But if we can cycle through, and we can get some more information. So uh, it has a speed warning, so you can set a certain speed and it'll warn you. Um, this is where your adaptive cruise control was. Uh, you, audio, you can see what your radio is doing. Once you pair your cell phone, you have some information here, like a caller ID screen. And you have all kinds of settings in here as well, language and different things. So that's just kind of a rundown, a quick rundown of uh, the information that you can get in this screen. And of course, you don't actually have to go in and change anything on there. Or, I mean, you don't have to go in there and constantly keep an eye on it. If there's anything that's out of spec or whatever, it'll pop up and let you know. So let's take a look over here at the center stack. There's your analog, regular, conventional clock here in the center, which is pretty cool. And here's your radio. And it has a CD player for those of you that are keeping the 90s alive. You got the CD player there at the top. And what's interesting about this radio, on the actual video, you can see these little lights under here. I cannot see those lights with my actual eye, my, um, my eyes. That's only showing up in the video. So those are little gesture sensors. So I put my hand up here in front of them and this little menu options pop up. So when I move my hand out of the way, it just kind of goes away. So that's what that's for. That's pretty neat. And then you have your volume tuned through the stations. Uh, you can have, so right now we're in, you know, like you have your FM and there's all kinds of different ways of playing music. You got Sirius XM, FM, AM. Let's go ahead and uh, kind of switch so you, through so you can see the different screens. And then let's go to media, because this is where you can actually play music through an auxiliary input, um, USB, SD card. So your SD card's here, SD card, USB 1, USB 2. Uh, Bluetooth audio, auxiliary, and a CD. So lots and lots of ways of playing music through the sound system. Uh, your phone, once it's paired, you have access to your phone book and recent calls and, and stuff like that. And then there's another voice recognition button there. Then you have your eject, mute, sound. You can adjust your sound here on the right. And then you have a whole menu system with, uh, you know, you can connect app, apps, Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, all that good stuff you can install on here with your phone and you can actually um, you know do lots and lots lots of things but that's a whole nother video there with those those features um, but I just kinda wanna show you the different screens here you have the setup images you actually see images on the screen that's pretty cool so I guess you can plug in a device with uh, like the SD card or um, I would use the SD card because I like a cameras a lot of cameras use SD cards But I guess you can use it a USB or whatever and look at images, which is pretty cool So just below the radio is your climate control. You have your heated seat controls for the driver and passenger uh, You have your temperature here and here for the driver and passenger. So it's a dual zone. You have your fan speed and Where you want the air to blow in here you can recirculate the air if you want you can sync both the front sides, uh, the driver and passenger, if you don't want to have separate temperatures, you want it all the same, uh, you can sync them as well. So down here is a little compartment which you open up and you'll find a 12 volt power supply and also that's where you'll find your USB and auxiliary inputs and you have a little storage compartment in there. I don't know if you can see in there so you can put your phone or whatever. So here's your shifter, and let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Pretty nice looking shifter. It's got the leather boot there and the, um, I don't know, it's just really cool. It's got like a stainless steel look here and very comfortable. So putting it in reverse gives you your backup camera. So you can see right there that the, the colors are crisp. You can see from the bumper all the way up to the sky and all around there. and just a really good safety feature. You notice a wide angle view, so uh, it's kind of distorted out, but that's good so you can see some more, you know, you see, get to see all around behind your vehicle. So let's go ahead and continue down. Neutral. There's drive, that's your normal drive position. It'll cycle through the six gear ratios. It's a six speed automatic transmission. You also have a sport mode, which will allow, you're basically just telling the vehicle you want 
highest performance you don't care about gas mileage as much now if you wanted to manually cycle through the gears you can go over here to the kind of ratchet shifter so you can cycle through the gears and it'll show you what gear you're in up here on the top right this is also helpful for downshifting if you're going down a hill and you need to use some engine braking there's your cup holders parking brake little tiny storage pocket there and your armrest which goes forward and back so you can put it right where you want it it also lifts up and you have a little storage compartment with a 12 volt power supply see if you can see in there yeah there we go sun's going down rapidly so hopefully you can see everything good here is uh your rear view mirror and it has a day and night mode this manual so up here we have some tap lights so you can have a quick reading light if you need to you can turn on all the interior lights by pushing this button uh, you can turn them off or you can have them put it in the center position to where the they'll turn on when you open up the door and they kind of slowly turn on and off like so and you have an SOS button a roadside assistance or assistance button there an information screen uh, I mean information button this is where you would actually um, talk to people uh, you can get assistance you actually have emergency button there for um, you know like emergencies or whatever you have a place to put some shades right in here but your sunroof is up here and you see I have this shade you can open it and close it which will allow for you know light to come in or not and you can also open it up if you want to and get some air coming in and today's a really nice day it's like 70 degrees or something like that and um, so it's really comfortable and that's controlled with this knob here and you can also use this knob and push it up to just vent it like so and close it let's take a look at the visors you have a mirror with a little light on top that opens that turns on when you open this up which is pretty neat same thing on that side let's take a look at the visibility in the back let's see if I can give you a good angle here yeah there we go now you notice it has really beefy headrest which is very good for safety but it does get in the way a little bit of the visibility. But you do have the side windows there helping with the blind spots. So when you look over your shoulder, you can actually see something. Not too shabby. You do have the backup camera helping out with uh, backing up, of course. All right, there you have it. 2016 Volkswagen Passat at East Coast Volkswagen. So thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Volkswagen for allowing me to show off an awesome vehicle. And I'll see you guys next time.